So, One Piece chapter 1055 is out. And one of the things that stood out to me is Green Bull and his line, Prejudice brings stability. This actually reminds me a lot about Ace and what Ben Beckman said about him, that him becoming a pirate really limited his growth and potential and he should have just became a revolutionary. In my opinion, with the way Green Bull speaks, he sounds way more like a cypher agent than an actual marine, calling the celestial dragons gods, saying if you're not affiliated with the world government, you have no standing in the world, I can kill every civilian in this country and it's not a crime because y'all aren't worth anything because y'all aren't affiliated with the world government. I mean, these are things you expect to hear from someone like Rob Lucci and not really a marine. And I like the contrast with our kind because he also has this evil justice, absolute justice where he doesn't mind killing civilians. But he doesn't like the Gorosei and the Celestial Dragons. And we see it multiple times where when he's with the Gorosei, he's always arguing with them. And then in this chapter, he he doesn't like the way the Celestial Dragons handle things on top of Marijua. He calls it a complicated mess. You can see he has his concern with the Gorosei and how they do things on Marijua and how the world out handles stuff. But he still hates pirates with a passion and he doesn't mind doing any evil act if it means getting rid of piracy. I just like the contrast of a marine mindset that's evil and then you got your cyberpunk mindset with green wood. Another important thing I never see anybody talk about with green wood is his devil fruit and the importance of his devil fruit being here in Wano right now. So in the previous chapter we see when he leaves Udon it's very luscious and green there's plants everywhere and that gave you the sense that this was a Logia Delphi because it changed the environment permanently and we got confirmation in this chapter that it is a Logia fruit. This is important because Wano has been polluted for over 20 years and to undo that will take a long, long time and Greenbull's Delphi can just do it in an instant. And I think this is the main reason why Greenbull is here. Yes, we get his introduction and that's good, but more importantly, he has to fight here. And I think his fight is going to be with Momonosuke. But when he fights, he's going to use his powers. And that's just going to turn Wano back into his green, luscious forestry country that it was back in Odin's time. But let's get back to Momonosuke fighting Green Bull. I believe Momonosuke needs to do this. I don't think Luffy and them don't know Green Bull's out there. They've got very good observation hockey. But we know the Straw Hats. And they leave opponents to the people they trust. And if they believe that person can actually hold their own against this opponent, they won't get involved. They'll just carry on with the carefree way that they normally do. And I believe Monosuke can hold himself against Green Bull. I don't think he's going to win. He lacks too much experience to actually win. But he has durability and strength with his new body that aged up 20 years. We saw that when Luffy woke up, we saw how he was getting beaten, but he didn't feel Nami's punch. So we can see his body's got stronger. Couple that with his dragon devil fruit and his durability is insane. So he can take a real beating from Green Bull and he can hold his own for quite a long time. I think somewhere along the line, someone else will step in, stop the fight, and that's that. So now that we're done with the Green Bull and Momonosuke and all the scabbard stuff, let's move on to Shanks. Honestly, I did not think Shanks would not want to be Luffy and I did not think Shanks would enter the throne wars, as Doflamingo put it. And because of this, I really think Luffy and Shanks are going to fight in the future. They have to butt heads because he's entering the race. And yes, they are friendly. It'll be a fight on a similar level to Luffy and Kobe, where they'll fight and give it their all, but they're not going to hold back just because they are friends. And another reason why they need to fight is Bartolomeo. He's part of Luffy's grand fleet and he put Luffy's story on Shanks' territory and burnt their flag. So although Shanks is going to deal with Bartholomeo, Shanks also has to deal with Luffy because it's the straw hat flag that was put there. And then at the end, we get the whole Aokainu and the whole Sabo debacle. So Sabo killed Cobra and Vivi went missing. We, we all know Sabo did not kill Cobra and we all know Vivi is with Imsama. And that's a big problem. I don't know what's going to happen. 
comment down below what you think is going to happen with Vivi. Is, is she going to be used as a tool to do the straw hats or something special that we don't know about, just like Shiro Hoshi? Because we saw the pictures in summer hair. Luffy, Blackbeard, Shira Hoshi, and Vivi. And Vivi was the odd one out because Shira Hoshi has Poseidon, Blackbeard, and Luffy are the two most likely candidates to fight for Pirate King. And Vivi is just Vivi. The, the, there's nothing particularly special about her except that she came from the twin families, but that means nothing in terms of influence in the One Piece world. That means nothing. So my my guess is as good as yours. Why is Vivi so important? And we see that Sabo has become more infamous than Dragon. So Dragon, the most wanted man in the world? No. Sabo is now the most wanted man in the world because of his influence in the world right now. The kings that are at the reverie, the people in their country revolted against them, and now their government is basically overthrown. The marines are a mess because of this. And that's finally giving us a picture of the mess that Greenwood was talking about in the previous chapter. And this basically gives us full closure of everything that happened within the reverie when we had that break between the acts. The only thing that's not answered is Blackbeard's movements. What is Blackbeard doing? Where was he going? What did he want to get? That is the big question. Everybody assumed it was a Mera Mera Nomi because the newspaper said something about Sabo and everybody thought, oh, he got caught. So Blackbeard wants the Mera Mera Nomi because Jesus Burgess went to the Colosseum to get it. Clearly that's not the case. So what does Blackbeard want? Also comment that down below. I really want to know your thoughts, your theories on what Blackbeard is doing. That's the only question unanswered for us. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this chapter. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.